Uh, Coach, obviously, ensuing days after a big win against Mexico State, uh, what have kind of been the main focuses in practice? You know, we're just uh, we've got a little time here, even though it's finals. Uh, just try to get back to uh, basics a little bit. Well, I thought we did obviously played well against New Mexico State in the sense we the last two games actually defensively being our our mantra. Or we're trying to get there. Um, we're not deviating from that, but also I think we've actually been playing better offensively. Um, we've turned over more than we have, but I think that's a byproduct of trying to be uh, play the right way when we're playing more with more purpose. Have you noticed anything maybe different in the team's kind of confidence after beating New Mexico State? I, not necessarily. I, I think actually maybe one of the hardest things in life is to handle success. And uh, certainly got a few pats on the back, but practice not, not terribly different. I mean, I may, that might be my perspective, just staying the long course and doing that. But um, we'll know moving forward. I, I think, uh, you know, we'll get to not think about them too much advanced, but I've seen a little bit of Riverside and they're pretty well coached. And, you know, like they beat, obviously they beat Nebraska by 20 and we got, we played, I thought, not didn't play well against Nebraska. They played, we you know. So, and they're pretty well schooled. It'll be a good good, good competition. You've got four games until the conference slate uh, picks up. Are you hoping to try and get some more reps for guys like Ryan and Bova just so they're kind of prepared for the Pac-12 uh, slate? Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, it's just it's too too hard to project. Like, where we're just a first-year program, you know, I'd, I'd hope when we get um, – even mature to next year where you have pretty solid eight guys you know you're playing and then the ninth and tenth. Um, but Volvo, we got to get in there because I think we really could have used him second half against New Mexico State when we started getting drilled on the glass. Um, and against those type teams, <laughs> against the New Mexico, really they play inside out. They like to shoot the three and they had two, they had three big posts. Um, those are perfect games for Volvo to, to impact. Um, and same with Ryan, we just we're you know we've had injuries and illnesses on the backcourt. We're just still not steadied out there. And Ryan's been out for three months, but he he gives us if he can get there because uh, he gives us a perimeter shooting threat and a passer, a good field guy, good size. Uh, but you know he's three months is a long time. Going off on injuries, how's uh, Isaac Fontan's recovery going? It, it seems better. He's practiced. Um, still still bothered by it a little bit, but hopefully we're we're going to get through that. I, I would expect him to be full go by Sunday, um, um, but uh, never knowing that. But I think we're pretty good. Do you foresee the lineup sticking the same with Gervais, or do you think guys will spot back in there? Uh, you know, it, it, uh, we'll see. I, I don't know. We're just kind of, we're still, like I said, we're still new. We still got a few more practices and just kind of see where it's at. And I, I'd like it to have it where it's not terrible when we get multiple guys starting or comfortable in that role. So, because um, you like to have, like I said, good eight, working eight, and it's not terrible having some scoring punch off the bench. Um, and like Tony's kind of changed us a little bit coming in there. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, where he can play some four and five and we'll see. But I, I like that he's kind of settled in and given us a little scoring there and Isaac can do that too. Cal McRae from UC Riverside seems to be the biggest contributor, contributor uh, averaging double digits. The only person on the team averaging double digit points. How do you plan on slowing him down, really, in this upcoming game? Well, they uh, obviously I'm very familiar with their head coach. We used to share an office at St. Mary's, and they play very much like St. Mary's with, in playing out of McRae in the in low post. And um, you're gonna have to, they're pretty well balanced, so they bring a lot of shooting off the bench, and you put a lot of shooting around Callum. He's gonna be pretty imposing, but uh, and he's got good skill, good feel down there. We'll have to give him different looks, either front him, play behind. Um, if we'll if we need to double him, we got that in our back pocket. Um, so, you know, he's he's an emerging force. He's just only a sophomore and be a good challenge. So with the team forcing a considerable amount of turnovers on the defensive side, do you plan on uh, finding ways of translating that into more fast break points for the upcoming games? You mean us, us turning people over? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I would like to. That would be, I think, really as we, I mean, it's been, what are we, nine games in? I think our... Uh, you know, instead of nerd ball, we might want to call it ugly ball. As far as like <laughs> our games are gonna, like, we're like, what? I'm like, well, you know, truthfully, I think Ken Palm has us. We're like 80th defensively and like middle of the pack offensively, and I think we're making improvements there. So I think you can put Jalen and Noah out there together, and you can harass some people. And Marvin, just we can get quick on the perimeter. Um, so uh, and that might be, like I said, it could be a way for us to generate other opportunities to score. But, uh, you know, getting 
hopefully getting Noah, uh, Noah and Marvin squared away more um, changes us, makes us quick. Jalen's coming off a bit of a tough game. He had seven turnovers on Saturday. Uh, how do you kind of reinforce his confidence combined with him having a veteran kind of mindset with it? You know what's crazy is that I thought after the game, I thought he played well, and I looked down the stat sheet, and I was like, because he did, he guarded, and it really set the tone for us, and he's that's so out of character for him in, in his, uh, you know, at Texas State and that, and he's, he's playing banged up, and uh, hopefully this week he's going to take some time here because he's got this hip – and hip injury, but uh, you know what? We were competitive. I mean, our guards did not ha did not produce good numbers offensively, but man, we we controlled that game and it started with the defense. And I re and I know Jalen. We we struggled against the press a little bit. But he stepped out of bounds. He had a couple funky, fluky plays. That I, I'm just I'm just, hope that's a one off. But he he was more more command actually out there than he, you know like more confident. Like this is his team. Run the team. Getting people in the right spots. So. Um, I look forward to it. I think he's just going to get better there. There was, I think Jeff led the team in shots with 10. Um, everyone kind of had a chance to get the get shots up. Was there an emphasis on sharing the ball, or that's just kind of how it played out? No, no, absolutely. We're trying to we're trying to get that. we, we got to establish ourselves. Our, our post play has been good. You know, we got to go there more. Playing inside out, just very willing passer, good in the post. Uh, he stretches it. Um, and Tony's given us a low post threat too, and Jazz knocked down a couple threes, and so I think we just got to play through those guys more, um, and that might be part of the adjustment. But uh, really tickled the, uh, you know, I think, and really CJ competed the best. He scored 20 points on eight shots, and we need him to be that kind of um, more more sort of like getting people in the bonus. You know, I think he drew six fouls and shot 13 free throws, um, and that's just going to make us more efficient and uh, him a better player too. I can't remember if I asked this Saturday, but was there an extra uh, kind of a point of emphasis with CJ attacking the rim more? Uh, there's been throughout the year. I said, like, let's not settle. Let's try to uh, just, like, all good scorers, and he's a good scorer, obviously. They score at all levels, and they usually get to the foul line. So he emphasis for him. Rebound your own misses. We've got to get better there. <laughs> and, you know, so that's – there's, like, you know, on off, he needs to improve on the offensive boards. And uh, get in the foul line more because that's just those are easy ways to get points and efficient ways to get points. So we, we, that's been an emphasis, and he's he's buying in and doing a good job. You and I think Coach Andrzejczyk have both talked about before how sometimes the players on the opposing teams that scare you are the guys who draw a bunch of fouls because they can beat you from the line. Are you kind of hoping CJ can kind of be that guy? For Absolutely. You? I just you know I, I <clears throat> use it in NBA terms. You look how they play, and James Harden plays on the top of the floor, and, and CJ is not the same type player, but he can be that for us in a little bit. Put him in the middle of the floor, put pressure on the defense. He's a good passer. He's a good playmaker. Um, as we get more comfortable, I think he – like he made a big play, probably the biggest play of the game where uh, was uh, he hit Jeff on a slip late in the game. Jeff got a layup, and he was, again, in the middle of the floor. They have, they're they showing hard on him. He's getting a lot of attention, but you can't help from anywhere if you're in the middle of the floor. It's hard to do that. So we're hoping he keeps rising to the occasion and, and – uh, you know, he's he definitely a growth mindset guy and willing to take on those challenges. We've seen more alertness with shooting the three ball, uh, starting with Jeff and a little bit of Jazz and even Tony this last yeah. Saturday. And we've also seen players like Marvin and Gervais kind of hesitate with open threes. Do you sense that that can be kind of a uh, – that could be a game plan that can be sort of pushed in further games? Oh, we like to have five get fives out there that can make a three. That makes it really hard to guard. And uh, that's where Jeff's – We'll miss him, you know, unless, you're, unless we find another one. But to have one at that position that can stretch the floor should open up things for other guys, penetration. Mm -hmm. And we're trying, like I said, we're trying to get paint touches. We're trying to get the ball via the pass or, or the dribble. And uh, and Jazz, I'm trying to encourage Jazz, too, to be more aggressive, more assertive. He's got – there's more to his game than just being a jump shooter. Um, he's, you know, he's got a slashy little Euro game to him, a little – he actually – was that last game? Maybe it was Idaho. I don't know. He made a little drive, and he's got more of that. And he can do that, and they're going to close out to him because he can shoot, and he can make plays too. So he, he's only a sophomore. He's going to get more comfortable, more confident, and I think he'll he'll help us there too. I think the biggest thing with Jazz is just some confidence right now. Yeah, he's, he's young. He didn't play a lot last year. He's coming off a he was out for about four months with a ankle, um, and he's probably going through the scout. Like he's you know he's had some success early, and you're going to get people are going to try to take away your strengths, and that's part of the process of getting good. That's why it's. Important for us to get some guys like that that can return to the program and build on something. Um, unless I have a program, there's just levels, uh, stages to get, become the best you can be. You mentioned that with losing Jeff, 
you wouldn't, you weren't sure it'd be easy to find another big guy that can shoot threes. Is that what you're kind of? I mean, it's just that's a unique talent to have at that position. Um, you know, actually, our FA, the Nigerian, he actually shot, he might be able to make them. He shoot them. Um, yeah, I just want to put that heat on a freshman. Right. But uh, but just like Jeff's, just really efficient player, and you know, it just puts. I know it's, we're going against him. Just not a lot of bigs that can are comfortable guarding out there. So um, and miss him because he's so responsible as a human being and good leader. I take it Vova's not going to be much of a threat from deep. No, I don't think so. Not yet. <laughs> I don't think he's stretching it. But he, he's. I think he's leading the country in offensive rebounding percentage. So uh, that's another reason. Like he he'll he should help us there too, getting more possessions. So um, uh, trying to find. I got to find some room to play him in situations. But we'll we're gonna play every game to win, so figure it out. You mentioned F.A. and that you can see if he can shoot threes. Is T.J. a three shooter or is he more of a slot? No, he's both. He, he, he can make a three. He's uh, good with the ball, um, long, athletic, good, you know, he's, I think both of them add what we need, where, where quickness on the edges, like, uh, or, or F.A. being an inside guy, and then uh, T.J. can be a perimeter, a little in the Noah, but, but I think he's, Whatever. I like those guys. I like Noah. <laughs> I like those guys. They keep you quick. 